All right, this is Michael Koberlein coming from Mesa, Arizona at Drifty Law Group and wanted to come back to you in our last video. We talked about uh, how a single member LLC can do a few different things. It contains the risk that happens if you have a person come into your business and they get injured or if there's some kind of a uh, some kind of an accident that takes place on your business premises. The single member LLC does contain the risk of those types of situations within the business so that uh, if there is a lawsuit or if there is some kind of judgment against you, that the assets that are within the business are fair game for those people who are suing or who get a judgment against you but they can't go after your personal assets with the, the uh, understanding that you are keeping your business business assets and your personal assets separate and you're not commingling and doing things like that. Uh, the LLC should, the single member LLC should be sufficient uh, with, with some exceptions to prevent creditors from getting to your personal assets and also contain the risk within that LLC only to business assets. But we also talked about how if you were injured uh, in an auto accident and if you were in a situation where you had injured others and it was your fault and you were being sued, that a single member LLC would not be sufficient to prevent those creditors from coming into your LLC and taking your business assets as well as your personal assets. In that situation, a single member LLC is not going to be sufficient. However, we also talked about how we could improve and increase our protection of the LLC against ourselves by restructuring that LLC and making it a multi-member manager managed LLC. So we're going to pick up where we left off there and we're going to talk about how the multi-member manager managed LLC provides greater protection for us when we are a, let's say in an example of an LLC, if I am a member of this LLC and I'm over here and I, I get in an auto accident and it's my fault and I have creditors coming after me, they get a judgment against me and now they want to come into this LLC and and uh, start raiding the assets there. Now, if it's, if it's single member LLC, then there's nothing really for a judge who is going to be providing a charging order or, or something else like that uh, to say that um, you shouldn't be able to gain access to that single member entity because if I'm the only member and uh, there's nobody else interest involved, then lots of times LLCs are, are going, are rated on, on that basis. However, let's say if I have a completely separate individual who is also a member of this LLC, uh, completely separate from my situation over here with the auto accident, this same creditor down here, uh, if they try and bring a, if they try and come in and, and take my, my, the assets from the LLC, in order to do that, they have to become a member as well in this LLC. And we would obviously document this well and provide documentation for the LLC that would require that members can only let other members in that they want to be 
members with or in the same way if you're if it's a partnership partners only want to be partners with people they want to be partners with and if there's a creditor trying to come in and the member over here who has nothing to do with this personal uh, battle that the other member uh, is dealing with with in relation to the auto accident the this creditor can't force this member to be to uh, allow them to become a member of that LLC and the judge isn't going to force this member to uh, allow this creditor to become a member either because this person over here has has no fault there's they have no nothing to do with this this auto accident over here and so that's one way to to prevent creditors from getting into the LLC. Another way to prevent them, let's say that they get a, a charging order and that they're doing all that they can to get at the LLC. Uh, if, if somehow we get to the point where we're negotiating with the creditors and, and they say, yeah, we want that interest. Well, documents are also drafted in a way here at Durfee Law Group, we, we draft them in a way that would indicate that the assets in this multi-member manager managed LLC are controlled by the manager. And the manager also has the power to not only invest those assets in uh, in investments that are not currently producing income, but they can also uh, they can also withhold distributions uh, whenever they whenever they want to. The manager has absolute discretion over those distributions to the members. So, if the manager has absolute discretion, they can withhold distributions, and uh, even though it, a creditor has a charging order, which would be essentially their way of saying, hey, I'm here, give me, give me whatever I'm owed to the LLC. Then the, uh, the manager can say, well, we're not, we're not uh, distributing any cash right now. Manager can also say, however, just because they're not distributing cash that, uh, they are, there still is a tax liability there. And a lot of people think that income, income equals cash, and that's not necessarily true. Income ultimately equals tax liability. So if this creditor wants to come forward with their charging lien, their charging order and say, I want to exercise my right to the interest in this LLC. Then the manager can say, okay, well, we're not making cash distributions right now, but here's your K1. Here's your, here's your, uh, here's your uh, tax liability. You owe this amount of taxes on your interest in this LLC. And I don't know about you, but how many, Creditors are going to want to have a tax liability uh, when they're trying to actually get some kind of interest in a business. I, I can't think of anybody who would want to do that. So that's another way that the LLC multi-member manager managed, managed LLC can keep creditors out uh, of an LLC is by uh, letting them know they're not making cash distributions, but they can certainly take on a tax liability if they want. That's all I got, guys. Uh, this is solely for education. Just wanted to explain some things, ways that you can improve in the uh, asset protection for LLCs. Certainly, I would encourage you to call us at 480-324-8000 if you have any additional questions. Uh, if if you have another tax professional or somebody certainly would have you, I would direct you to talk with them before you make any restructuring of your, of your LLCs or any other entities that you may have. 
because these things can get technical. And while I'm giving a general explanation here, there are a lot of things that we think about and do that will cinch up and, and uh, close the gaps when it comes to making the best possible uh, structure for your LLCs and your partnerships and, and your business businesses in general. So thank you everyone for joining me and uh, have a great day.